Welcome to the Church of St Nicholas Whittam and this video introducing you to the pipe organ. Mozart famously asserted that the pipe organ is the king of instruments and certainly with its hundreds, sometimes even thousands of pipes and myriad tonal possibilities, it is the ultimate symbol of musical independence. Over the next 20 minutes or so, I'll introduce you to this extraordinary instrument and its musical capabilities. The organ here was built in 2002 by the British firm of Kenneth Tickell. This instrument is sited on the north side of the church at the head of the nave and speaks boldly into the space. As the largest piece of furniture in the building, organs are often beautiful to look at and this is no exception. The case is made of oak and the pipes that you can see have a high content of tin. You'll see that there are two keyboards for the hands, called manuals, and a separate keyboard for the feet, the pedal board. The keys of the manuals are laid out identically to the piano, and the pedal board is simply a larger version, with sharps and flats in a darker wood to the naturals. The pedals are played with the toes and heels of the feet. You may come across these signs in printed organ music. Now we'll turn the organ on. Here the controls are very clearly labelled. Older organs may have controls here under the lowest manual or even behind the organ. And it's worth saying at this stage that it's very important to make sure organs are switched off after use because an alarming number of fires in churches start in the organ. The organ is a sustaining instrument and unlike the piano, it's not possible to vary the volume of a note by the velocity with which the key is struck. Changes in volume on the organ are made by the addition or subtraction of stops and where they are available by the use of expression or swell pedals but more of that later. The sound of the organ is produced by pipes of various length and controlled by stops. There are different types of stop controls. These are called draw stops, but you may come across tabs, rockers, or even illuminated buttons. Drawing or selecting a stop makes that set or rank of pipes available. Each note in the rank has its own individual pipe, a total of 56 notes per rank. And this modest two manual instrument here at Whittam has over 1,176 pipes. The stops of the organ are arranged in divisions. The stops for the lower manual are here, for the upper manual here, and these are the pedal stops. Divisions of the organ have names which have evolved over the instrument's long history, but which generally reflect their musical purpose. The two manual divisions here at Whittam are called Great and Swell. The Great organ contains the boldest sounds on the organ, and the Swell has its pipes in a box which is faced with louvre doors. Using this pedal, I can open and shut the louvres, thereby creating a crescendo and a diminuendo. Other divisions you may come across include choir organs, designed to accompany voices, and solo organs with orchestrally inspired stops. A device called a coupler allows the combining of divisions, for example, allowing the stops of the swell to sound on the grate. It is also possible to couple the manual divisions to the pedals. Pipes vary in length from something like this, which is just the size of a pencil, to the redwoods of the organ, which inhabit the pedals and can grow up to 32 foot in length. Now, the length of the pipe directly affects the pitch of the pipe. I have two further pipes here and we'll compare the sounds that they make.
Middle C on the organ is here, the third C from the bottom. And if I draw the eight foot open diapason on the grate and play that C, what you're hearing is piano pitch. The four foot principle, as you'll hear, is pitched an octave higher. And the two foot fifteenth sounds an octave higher still. So in effect, as I build what is a chorus, with three stops drawn at eight, four and two foot pitch, I'm playing three octaves at once. Now, mixture stops crown the chorus and they are made up of several ranks of high-pitched pipes and they give the organ its characteristic silvery tone. Middle C on the pedals is here, near the top of the pedal board. An 8-foot stop will sound a piano pitch but a 16-foot stop will sound an octave lower. 16-foot tone is the basis for most pedal parts and gives the organ its characteristic gravitas. Not all pipes look or sound the same, and broadly speaking there are two types of pipe. One flues and the other reeds. Now, flu you mustn't confuse with the word flute, and reeds doesn't mean that all those stops are saxophones or clarinets or oboes. The flues produce their tone rather like a whistle, uh, with air vibrating in a tube or a flue. Air under pressure is pushed through the foot of the pipe and over a sharp lip. That construction can be seen in the diapason pipes here in the facade of the organ. Flue stops divide into three families diapasons, flutes, and strings. And these represent the foundation stops of the instrument. The diapason has no orchestral counterpart, unlike the flute or string, and can be thought of as pure organ tone. Flutes can be constructed like recorders, and many types of flute have a lot in common with that instrument. Others are of different construction and are voiced to sound more like the orchestral flute. String stops have the narrowest looking pipes and you may come across orchestral violins, cellos, gambas or, as here, solitional. This family of stops produces the softest sounds on the organ and occasionally you'll come across two ranks of pipes which are tuned in such a way that they undulate gently together. This effect is called a celeste. Unlike flue pipes which have no moving parts, reed stops have a vibrating brass tongue resting against a carved channel or shallot. The design of the resonating part of the pipe above is key to the resulting sound. The wind system, which is activated when the organ is turned on, consists of parts that produce, store and deliver wind to the pipes. The key action here is mechanical, with thin strips of wood, or trackers, which connect the key to the valve that allows air into the pipes. 
tracker or mechanical action is the oldest way of controlling the sound and organs dating back to the time of Bach were built in this way. Other forms of action exist. Electric action connects the key to the pipe with an electrical link and pneumatic actions use changes of pressure in metres of lead piping. Organ music is often written on three staves, with the manual parts in the treble and bass clefs, and the independent pedal parts on the lowest stave, also in the bass clef. Music on two staves can imply playing with the manuals only, but hymns are an exception. The lowest part is played by the feet, with the left hand playing the tenor part. Stop names can be confusing, drawing on Spanish, English, German, French, Latin, but having a clear idea of their pitch and their tonal family will help you combine them effectively. I've already mentioned the diapason chorus. This is an important sound for hymn playing and for playing the music of Bach and his contemporaries. And here are some other effective combinations for you to try. Eight and four foot flutes. The eight foot flute with the two foot. The gedeckt eight foot with the solitional eight foot. And with the oboe. I can solo out using the swell accompanied by the grate. And coupling, I can join together all the eight foots of the organ. Often organ composers specify very precisely which stop should be used, but this isn't always the case. Trust your ears as to which combination of stops sound well together, and if in doubt, consider going to a reputable teacher and asking for further guidance. I'll talk about this process at the end of the video. The organ has a very substantial repertoire dating from the 14th century to the present day. And that repertoire has rather mirrored the development of the organ itself, with Germany and France making especially important contributions. During the Renaissance, music was written to be played on any keyboard instrument, and there is an overlap here with the repertoire of the harpsichord. Merulo in Italy and Svelink in Holland had a profound effect on the development of pure organ music. music for the organ in Germany was often based on hymn tunes or chorales and the prelude was a popular free form of composition. Buxtehude and Bach were giants of the age with Handel contributing his sparkling organ concertos. In France at the same time, composers responded to the unique sounds of the French organ with music for specific combinations of stops. Couperin wrote his organ masses and Dacan's music is a Christmas favorite.
term voluntary has a long history associated with improvisation, but in 18th century England it developed into a definite form. John Stanley's trumpet voluntary is often heard at weddings. During the 19th century, French organist composers were inspired by the instruments by Aristide Cavaille-Cole, leading the organ into symphonic realms. Franck, Vidor and Vierne all wrote large-scale multi-sectional works from which Vidor's famous Toccata originates. romantic organs were also built in Germany with Brahms and Reger leaving significant works for the organ. During the 20th century, the organ has been a familiar presence in the concert hall, and Saint-Saëns Organ Symphony and Poulenc's Organ Concerto are well-known pieces for organ and orchestra. Transcriptions of symphonic works have also found a place in the organ's repertoire, from Valkyries to Sugar Plum Fairies. In more recent years, Dupré, Hindemith, Messiaen and a host of other composers have continued to expand the literature of the organ. Publishers have also responded to the wide-ranging repertoire by providing anthologies of music across the eras and genres of music that I have mentioned. The Royal College of Organists is committed to lifelong learning and through the RCO Academy can help you find an organ tutor. The Academy also offers a wide range of courses, events and resources and further information can be found at rco.org.uk. It's possible to see the organ as simply a miracle of engineering or perhaps an instrument just for the church, but I hope in the last little while I've given you a more in-depth understanding of its repertoire, its mechanism and its playing technique.